Hello, my name is John Bernard. I'm the Superintendent of Schools in North Reading. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Inside NRPS. I'd also like to welcome our guests for today's show, Detective Paul Lucci of the North Reading Police Department. Paul is also serving uh, for this year as the School Resource Officer in the North Reading Public Schools. And welcome back Amy Luckowitz, who has been on the show before as the Youth Services Director for the Town of North Reading, but is now serving as the Drug-Free Communities Grant Coordinator, a new role for Amy um, that she's been transitioning into over the last few months. And we're going to speak a little bit more about that sure. and learn from both you and Paul about some of the work that you're doing uh, in the community to the benefit of the students of our district and uh, the community at large. So welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for having us. I appreciate it. you uh, being here today. So, Amy, let's yes. start with you. Sure. Why don't you, I think it might be nice for the community, because you are such a visible presence in our community. You've been around a few years, and people have gotten familiar with you and your role as the Youth Services mm -hmm. Director. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, your new role and what your chief responsibilities are? Sure, absolutely. So, um, about two and a half years ago, we were awarded the Federal Drug-Free Communities Grant. Um, this is something that was supported by the Community Impact Team to pursue science-based prevention um, strategies focused on ages 18 and under. So everything we do is prevention focused. Um, although drug free communities grant funds can be, uh, a lot of people come to us saying, oh, can you do things on interventions and treatments? We cannot, all, all the funds get directed towards prevention and they can be across a number of substances. Mm -hmm. So traditionally the four are have been alcohol, tobacco, marijuana and prescription drugs. But based on trends that we're starting to see, we also added in vaping, which we'll talk about today. Um, so my role is to oversee the finances of that grant and oversee the implementation of the grant goals mm -hmm. in collaboration with a town volunteer-based coalition, which is a really cool and unique way of approaching it. This is not a police problem. It's not a school problem. This is a community problem. Right. And so the way that we are addressing that is we have a very active coalition that is chaired by Marcy Bailey, volunteer, many people mm -hmm. know her. Sure. She's done a great job. And we all get together and we discuss strategies that are research proven to intervene and prevent students and young people from using these substances. Mm -hmm. And Paul, you serve as a member on that coalition, Yeah, correct? I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. As, as a pretty wide cross-section of people from across the community, I know I been a little bit more active this year, I've attended a few yes. meetings, uh, scheduling sometimes becomes yeah. difficult for <laughs> yeah. all of us. I yeah. Know, but yeah. We make them and it's a, it's a good group of working people that um, are just trying to do the right thing. And, and, and it's nice to see, you know, kind of cross section of the community represented. To your point, we have to have at least 12 sectors represented, ah, okay. uh, including parents, students, educators, mm -hmm. business uh, men and women. I think that that's been a real key to the success of a coalition model, is that they're saying you can't just be too top heavy on uh, law enforcement or schools, it has to be a real balance. And that strives to meet the demands that this is a community issue. That's it's right. not necessarily one department's issue. Yep. Mm. So we have a number of props here on the table and, and, and I think uh, as we prepared for today's show we talked about um, you know what, what we thought might be a, an interesting focus for the community, mm -hmm. something that um, while it's interesting is a little bit disturbing for those of us who've been working uh, with you and, and, and uh, the implementation of the grant funding and it's vaping. Mm -hmm. which uh, seems to be a, a, a bit of a disturbing trend, um, not only in North Reading, but just at large. And so um, I wonder if you could talk uh, maybe to me and to the community and give us a little bit of kind of a historical background on what is vaping and why all of a sudden does it seem to have emerged as a, as a problem? Well, you did mention that this is not a North Reading specific uh, problem, and that's absolutely correct. This is a, a nationwide uh, trend uptick in, in uh, use of vaping, and um, it's been an interesting progression. So across the nation, and including in North Reading, we've seen the use of what's called conventional cigarettes uh, or tobacco products drop significantly. Mm. And that has been because of a couple of factors. One, we have longevity studies to know the long-term negative health impact of cigarettes, right. which does have, to a degree, an impact on the way students think about it. Mm -hmm. But the second thing has been taxation and um, making cigarettes extremely expensive. We're just not seeing that with vaping products. Um, and they're also touted as being much healthier, uh, which we'll talk about in just a second. So traditionally, you know, when vaping was started, um, it's called vaping because it, it was um, heating up water vapor. And to be honest with you, that's just not the case anymore. Mm. Um, and that's hurt us a lot because it started with water vapor. Kids think they're still using water vapor. Adults still think they're using water vapor. And that's just not the, the case anymore. Paul talk what's specifically in these. Mm -hmm. But it was started as a nicotine cessation device. So something that looked like a cigarette that you could hold like a cigarette to help you kick 
the, the habit. Right. Um, but that's not really what we're seeing anymore used for, although definitely some adults are using it to um, quit cigarettes. That's certainly not the case with young, uh, young people and students. So we were seeing products like that. And if this had been even five years ago, we would be talking about these sorts of products. These are flavor-based tobacco products. So this is um, a wrap that you can wrap tobacco or marijuana, and it has the flavor, this one, of blueberry. This is, these are called cigarillos. This one's grape, and you can either smoke the tobacco out of this, or you can poke the tobacco out and fill it with marijuana. These were really hot trends um, even five years ago. Mm -hmm. We're beyond that now. Um, the progression of from the traditional, conventional, what we are calling vape device, moved into what's called a mod, and it's a chunky, it's very heavy. These are sort of the products that we're seeing among um, you, uh, excuse me, um, adults. And it's because adults don't really care if they hide it or not. Right. So they don't mind smoking a very heavy, Something chunky bulky device. Or, yeah. Correct. What we're really focusing on now um, are the concealable devices. So things like um, the Juul. And um, we have over here as well the, the Soren, a Juno. So as uh, Detective Lucci takes that one out, I'll show you this one. So these are t what we are seeing typically used by young people that <laughs> Absolutely. are trying to hide from their parents, say, that, Absolutely. that they're Absolutely, using yeah. a vaping device. So you can see that these look very similar. They look like USB devices. And in fact, right. um, Paul has the charging device. It goes right into your computer. And, you know, many adults, parents, teachers think that they're just downloading homework or something because it looks like a USB port. Mm -hmm. The pods are very small. You can separate them. You can hide one in one place and your device in another place. But these are the things that we're absolutely seeing. And it's an alarming trend because of the amount of nicotine that's involved. Mm. So with More the nicotine... smoking a cigarette. So with these specifically. So when you were using them to quit smoking, you could work your way all the way down to right. a zero nicotine. But with these, they don't even come in a zero nicotine, especially the jewels. So one pod of um, juice from a, from a jewel, which we'll talk specifically about uh, because that is the hot item, mm. is about 200 puffs or one pack of cigarettes. And now we've just discovered that they're actually making them stronger. You can buy them stronger to be about a, a pack and a half worth of nicotine. And you'll see that, you know, we'll use our gloves here and there because nicotine is the most addictive mm -hmm. substance legally sold. And because it's in liquid form, you can absorb it through your skin, yeah, which is sure. extremely concerning for pets, yeah. for toddlers. Yeah. Um, and we're taking steps to reduce that, but we so, can talk about so that. So someone buys the larger device and then they buy the pod to add yes. to that larger device. And what does what something like that cost? So the starting device um, is about 50 to $75. Oh, We've wow. seen them... We've seen them range. Um, in North Reading, we've learned, though, that the price of a starter kit is not prohibitive. It doesn't really seem to stop anybody. Um, and then the, the packs of pods, the refills, range $15, $25. And, you know, when you have a three-pod-a-day habit, like a three-pack-a-day habit, um, it can get extremely expensive, but we're not really seeing that to be prohibitive mm. for um, anybody, for young people at least. Uh, same prices with the Soren and um, the Junos can be and, pretty expensive. And that one there, the Soren, is made to uh -huh. be disguised as what, like a computer mouse? Is that what it is? Or It's actually not made to be disguised intentionally at all, oh, according to them. it just looks like one. It just happens to look like that. And okay. then um, the attraction is, it's extremely small. Oh, it almost looks like an inhaler for some people. Yeah. But you can buy lanyards and you can buy accessories that help you slip them down your shirt. So we're seeing these extremely concealable devices become more and more popular. Hmm. You can get them in any color. Um, so now that I see it, in the, it's, it's smaller. It's than the smaller pod. than you think yeah. it is. Yeah. Mm. Yep. We, how, do, how do you use that? How does somebody use that? How do they, how sure. do they deliver the... Yep. So you can see here there's a charge port. Yes. But this is also, um, you can see a tiny, tiny little slit there. Mm -hmm. And this is a pod that you put in there. You turn it on with the button. It heats a heating coil and you inhale. I see. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with the jewel, the small. Yep. Yes. You inhale off of that smaller uh, little yeah. pod. And, and with the jewel, you don't even have to press a button on this one. When you start inhaling it, it'll know that you uh, that it'll heat up the coil, and then the uh, the uh, the vape uh, vapor will mm -hmm. come out of here, the top top part. And the the intended effect is to as, as if you were experiencing something like smoking a cigarette, only exponentially. Severe? Is that a fair way to say it? It's I mean, just a, a stronger, uh, 
uh, amount of nicotine it's delivered. It's concentrated. Yeah. Yes. Concentrated. Yes. Right. Yeah. The, the Juul and the Juno, it, it, they're using different type of delivery methods for the nicotine. It's actually called a salt nicotine they're using. And the thing about salt nicotine is they can put a more concentrated amount of nicotine into the juice where when they're the old delivery system, they weren't able to do it. So now we're getting really higher amounts of nicotine. And, and the thing is, is they come very concealable. Mm. So this is very easy to put a, break apart. You can put different things in your pocket or anything. It's very slim, small form factor. So it's very attractive to someone who's trying to hide their juuling habit, right. or they call it, or vaping habit. Mm -hmm. um, Juul is the, the most popular one, but yeah, so it's 200 puffs and about one pack of cigarettes just for this small little amount of uh, liquid. And Juul is spelled J-U-U-L, correct? Right. If any, you know, yeah. people are wondering what we're saying, it's not J-E-W-E-L. Like yeah, -E that's right, J-U-U-L. Exactly. Do we know, does that stand for something? What is the... It's the name of the company, name but of, um, yeah. it's, it's so popular, it has its own verb. It's called Juuling. Juuling. Yeah. yeah. So for someone that's trying to hide the habit, I mean, I wouldn't know what that was if I found that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ground. I wouldn't know what it was. I... So another really interesting strategy mm -hmm. is they've um, come out with these uh, sort of devices that help you conceal. So this is actually a fidget spinner that fits a jewel. So if I'm home and I'm using what my mom and dad might recognize as my regular fidget spinner and I'm just spinning my jewel, it's actually made for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's been an interesting process. Um, you know, this is just a battery pack that you would use to charge your cell phone, but you have that laying next to another device. As an adult, our brains put like things with like. If we recognize something, sure. we're going to not looks guess. Innocent. It looks yeah. innocent. And so we'll oftentimes uh, we'll find things like that next to something that's familiar. And so adult brains just don't work like that. We're putting like things with like, and you might miss up. It is everything on the table here, or are there certain items that can be purchased at a convenience store? Or great the, question. Uh, okay. Yeah, great yeah. question. Can we talk a little bit about Absolutely. If, it, if, it, if that's a good segue? Sure. Yeah, it is. Um, well, we're finding many of these products to be purchased online. Um, and although online you have to be 18 and older, all you have to do is simply click a button that says you're 18 right. and over. Some of the websites do ask you to verify with a birthday, but if you can do the math out, you can figure out what to put in. Um, however, one of the things we caution adults is that we're, we often give kids uh, debit uh, cards or prepaid mm -hmm. Visa gift cards as presents, and we're finding that students use that to make the purchase. In North Reading, however, I'm very happy to tell you about um, some steps that we've taken. So we have made our town what's called a Tobacco 21 town. You have to be at least 21 to purchase alcohol or vape products in town. Mm. This is something that's a trend in Massachusetts, but we did not want to wait for the, for the state to catch up to us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we took that step. The other thing that we did is we put in a flavor ban in North Reading. And this is really important for a couple of reasons. One of my concerns is, you know, we'll let you smell some of these products. They're extremely sweet. It's cotton candy, mm. bubble gum. If you're a toddler, and by the way, these caps are extremely easy to open, and you take a swig of that, it's, it's instant, instant nicotine poisoning. Yeah. So we wanted to, to reduce that uh, concern. The other thing is marketing to kids. We put a flavor ban in because um, clearly some of these products are not marketed for adults. A really good example of that is this uh, juice box. This Absolutely. is, this is yeah. uh, vape juice. It's so attractive, it looks just like a juicy juice box. It even has the straw on the side. And so we wanted to reduce the impact of marketing on youth. The um, important thing to know, though, is that the flavor ban does not apply to uh, menthol, mint, or spearmint. Those are three conventional flavors that are not part of the flavor ban, so you might still see those in stores in North Reading, and that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, only stores that are retail stores for tobacco and vape products are allowed to sell flavors. And right now there's only one in town. Okay. Yep. So Interesting. if you see, you know, flavors in town, we recommend giving us a call and we'll send in our tobacco partner to go check it out. And would someone call your office at the town hall? Is that the best or, or the police department? Is it something the police department would enforce? Or uh, even better, if you call directly to the Board of Health. To the Board yep. of Health. And that's who, who established the ban? We did it through, through a, board of that's health. correct. We did okay. it through a Board of Health um, bylaw. Interesting. Yep. Regulation. Yep. What, what is it beyond the obvious um, of... Because I, having worked in schools for a long time, I've seen a pretty uh, significant decline in the use of uh, traditional cigarettes being smoked. Yeah. Very rarely, you know, do I see that, and and that's been the case for, for um, quite some time now, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, it's now been replaced with something that sounds more harmful health-wise. Do you, 
what what efforts are being made to um, to educate young people, particularly around the dangers? I mean, I you know it's it's, it's you, you mentioned at the start here that we've seen a decline in, in tobacco and this yes. statistical data. I would mm -hmm. imagine there's probably very little statistical data out yet. Is that to kind of use as a talking point with children to say or young people to say? That's right. So um, because this is so new and because it's constantly changing from one device to the next to the different types of um, of nicotine that, that Paul had mentioned, we don't have longevity studies. So mm. um, you had mentioned before that it's more dangerous. To be honest with you, we don't know that for sure. We don't have any I science see. that says that. The good news is, is that we keep an eye out for these sorts of studies. Mm -hmm. And it seems like since January, we've seen a flood of studies come out related to vape use. Yeah. Um, and one of the studies that to me is most alarming is uh, Johns Hopkins put out a study that is showing the, the vape coils are creating a release of what they're calling toxic levels of heart heavy metals, chromium, lead, um, and nickel to be specific. Mm -hmm. So although mm -hmm. we don't have any longevity studies to say what that's gonna do to your lungs, I mean, let's, let's try not to Logic. repeat our mistakes right. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so teaching students about that mm -hmm. uh, has been a challenge, but Paul can tell you a little bit about what we've, what we've been doing in town. Yeah, so in town, we've been holding these community forums. Mm. And uh, the first one we had, we had great turnout. We had like 63 people. March 1st, I think. It, yeah. yeah. Sold out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And it was, it was a great event because we had parents come and we had them, they were very concerned and we had them go through our presentation um, front to back. And then after, they even wanted to stick around more and keep talking to us because they just wanted to keep learning. And mm -hmm. I, I could see it was a big need for parents to kind of see exactly what's going on. Um, parents were coming up to us saying, like, I found one of these and I had no idea what it was. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're like, I saw it in my kid, kid's bedroom. And then they came up and said, oh, my God, that's what it was. It was, it was a jewel pod. So now they're becoming more and more aware. Uh, it, it was a great event. Um, parents got to actually identify the things that, that they could see. They could take pictures of everything. So that was one of the uh, things that we were doing is just holding more community firms. Awareness. For to come. Awareness, yeah. Aware. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Um, another great thing we're doing is invited by you, Parent University. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be there, and that's going to be on um, April 6th. Uh, April 7th. 7th. April 7th. Saturday, Saturday, April 7th. Yeah. Saturday, yeah. Saturday yes. April 7th. <laughs> Yeah, so that would be great to have more parents come in yeah. and actually see the, the stuff firsthand. Um, and then um, uh, we've been actually invited into the health classes, too, at your, uh, at your high school. Good. So um, your health teachers have been very supportive. So that's a way to kind of now educate students. I mean, there's yep. got to be some students that just don't know. Exactly. Absolutely. They think it's a cool trend or something. Or they'll say it's, it's just water vapor. Right. What's the big deal? Don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. And I would hope that this once big they become a little more educated yeah. about it, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so new. I, I spoke to a student at one time who, who is not from our town, and uh, we, he was telling me about a, a presentation that was coming to his school, and we, we got to talking about vaping and the trend, and he used the word epidemic. Yes. Really? He used the word epidemic yeah. with me at his school. Wow. Yeah, I'm that, not was, surprised. that was concerning, yeah, yeah. but I would mm -hmm. venture to guess that that is probably largely the case in a lot of, a lot of schools, you know? Um, do, do you see this as a particularly a, a kind of a high school age problem or are students at the middle school or I would hope not even younger than middle school, but is it, do middle school yeah. students have access to, you think, to a, to, to, to uh, vaping products? So I can, I can kind yeah. of touch on that. Yeah, so absolutely. right now um, we are in the process of taking a survey and it's for grades six through 12. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important to us that uh, parents encourage their students to take this, this survey. It tells us trends. Unfortunately, this year we're going to be taking a baseline. Mm -hmm. So to measure increase or decrease, we won't know. But what we'll know after that is at what grade are North Reading students starting to experiment with this. We do know nationwide it is middle school trend really? and up. We know that nationwide, but to say that in North Reading, we, we just don't have the facts right mm -hmm. now. We will within the next couple of months to right. say, uh, you know, X amount of kids started at sixth grade or 10th grade. Uh, we just don't know that, but mm -hmm. we know the national trends. The other thing I just wanted to mention too real fast is um, related to the longevity studies. Even if we don't ever get a longevity study, even if that never happens mm -hmm. or it doesn't happen for another 10 years, mm -hmm. what parents need to know is that we're creating nicotine addicts and yeah. that's extremely dangerous. Um, as an adult, if you're trying to quit, quit nicotine, you have um, treatments like nicotine gum, the patch. These are all systems that are made for an adult's metabolism, not for youth. Not for young person, we don't yeah. have any treatment for nicotine mm -hmm. addiction for youth besides behavioral therapy. They go into some sort of treatment for that and cold turkey. Now, if you've ever been an adult trying to quit anything cold turkey, 
we're going to die. You know how hard that is. Mm -hmm. This is extremely concerning. The longer that they use, the more uh, addictive they're going to become. And we even have students who will tell us, well, I'm using a zero nicotine product. Yeah. And this is something we have to address. Mm. Um, these products aren't regulated. And when they're not regulated, we can put whatever we want into them. Mm -hmm. And the federal government, the state government is trying to take steps to regulate that, but it's not right now. And what they're finding nationwide is, unless it's manufactured in the United States, I can label this bottle zero nicotine, and it can still contain nicotine. And what I'm doing is creating a lifelong user. You, as the child, think that you're doing something less harmful by right. using zero nic when zero I'm inherently nic addicting myself to yeah. it. When unintentionally right. you're, you're ingesting nicotine. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that more and more. So one of the things that we just can't encourage enough is for parents to speak out about regulations for this and to ensure that things are properly labeled. Because right now it's, mm. it's scary. Do you have any sense of where that is when, when we might expect regulations? I've heard some legislation to be um, discussed around June of this year. Whether it gets approved this year or not, I wouldn't expect that to happen. And that would be a federal? It's uh, not, at not, the federal not a level. state level. Yep. Okay. Yep. And uh, you know, my opinion would be that it would be something similar to cigarettes where you would regulate right. it under yeah, you tobacco. And at least. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, as I look at these products and I listen to you both, the fact that there is an attempt in the marketing to disguise it yeah. or, or, or to um, you know, create some level of anonymity as to what the item is if a parent were to find it in their child's bedroom or yeah. a book mm -hmm. bag or something like that, that in and of itself sends a message to me that it's not something that we should be mm -hmm. doing as yeah. young people. And yeah. so because of that, we're going to disguise it in such a way so that you can do yeah. it. I mean, that, that, that that suggests that there's a harmful effect. I mean, and they're extremely attractive. I mean, this bottle very, here, they advertise it and it changes flavors in your mouth. Yeah, I can, you know, I can get smell a smell it. here, yeah. you know, yeah, sitting yeah. here, I can he smell, yeah. uh, you know, some almost like fruited, fruited scents. But any any uh, flavor that you can imagine has been produced, and then they also teach you, you know, recipes how to make your own. Yep. Hmm. Um, so that we're starting to see uh, flavor drops that you would normally use for baking mm -hmm. being sold again unregulated because it's a baking product you know, to like flavor cake yeah. or cupcakes. Yeah. We're seeing those being purchased. Uh, that's something else to watch out for because then you can do your own um, blends, custom blends. If you like, uh, we've seen, you know, strawberry shortcake, creamsicle, you name it. All very attractive yeah. flavors. That, Extremely yeah, attractive. Would, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and another thing they do is they, they, we don't have them here, but you can like, you can like dress these up. You can put like wraps around them to make it like a Louis Vuitton, or they actually sell Gucci wraps for it. Yeah. And if if you're a normal person trying to trying to uh, quit smoking, I think straight black is fine. I don't think you're really worried about getting your Gucci or Louis sure. Vuitton um, mm -hmm. jewel. Right. So it's just all these things are just mounting up, and it looks like they are really starting to target um, to a younger audience. We've seen uh, Pokemon wraps. Really? Yeah. Don't tell me that's marketed to, a, to an Perhaps adult. That's not an, you know, that's exactly not an adult, not an adult, adult yeah. uh, interest. So um, it's alarming. You know, we're doing mm. everything we can in town to reduce that impact. But, you know, online is the, we have no control over that. Right. And yep. uh, all parents can do is be vigilant about where their kids are viewing online and what they're spending their gift so cards that, on. So that, that's a good little segue into what I wanted to ask you both next. And there are a couple of other subjects I might like to hit sure. on with you sure. too. Aside from the vaping, just, and this is extremely informative to me. I, you know, I'm getting an education here as well. If, if for, our, for our folks that are watching at home uh, that see the show as parents, what, what would you advise them um, as they try to, you know, if they find something or, or where, what should they be looking for and what advice might you offer to them in having a conversation with their own children about, uh, about vaping? So I always like to recommend to the, to the parent, the first question is going to be, tell me what you know about vaping. Um, oftentimes when parents ask that, the kids will say back, it's water vapor, it's no big deal. And then you mm -hmm. can open up a whole conversation about what it really is. Mm -hmm. But parents have to be educated first to do that. Sure. Um, we have seen that happen where um, kids just don't think that they're taking in anything dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so asking that question, what do you think, you're do what do you think it is? Um, the other question would be to ask the kids, where did, where did it come from? And they might tell you where they bought it, but really what I'm trying to get is, you don't know if that was made in China. You don't know if that was made in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, just being more consumer aware. So starting it off on a lighter foot just to not intimidate as the student. As opposed to a disciplinary fa Correct. Kinda, yeah. So just starting it off as an education <clears throat> base. Mm -hmm. If you get the kid that says, I know exactly what I was doing, mm -hmm. um, then you know you might want to start considering addressing, addressing it with um, whether it be their guidance counselor, their mm -hmm. own pediatrician, because I would suspect 
to developing a nicotine habit. And that would be my yeah. primary pr uh, priority. Is, is the physiological is the, effect. Is the addiction. Of, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, as we mentioned, there's no treatment for that. Mm -hmm. So you need to start engaging your doctor um, and guidance counselor in that process. Uh, is, is, is there a place where parents could go to learn more, like a, a, a website, or do you have a recommended resource? Hmm, could they, can they Google? A one-stop shop? Yeah, they can Google, Google. Google vaping, right? And yeah. about Did, yes and no. A lot of the vaping articles out there are produced by vape companies. Yeah, that's the okay. problem. If you um, start Googling it, you might get a lot from the companies itself putting up blogs about why it's okay. so great yeah. and this, that, and the other thing. And I, don't, I won't trust those. I like science-based articles coming out of educational yeah. resources and things yeah, like that. That, so that makes sense. I would recommend if you're going to do an online search to type in scholarly um, peer-reviewed journal for... Gotcha. Vaping, vape juice. It's mm -hmm. called vape juice or mm -hmm. e-juice. Yeah. Um, e or e-juice e -juice, okay. as an electronic juice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple of resources up on the CIT website. So it's northreadingma.gov slash CIT. Uh, you can click on the resource page or the coalition page. And you can also access that, access that site through the town of North Reading's website, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so if absolutely. Someone were to, if that's easy absolutely. to remember maybe yeah. is to go to the, the town's website, on. find the link. I believe it's on the left. It's kind of the menu. And, and department and by department. By department, yep. right. Um, alternatively, you know, email me at coalition at northreadingma.gov and I will send you a one pager about juuling specifically. Maybe, Phil, we could get a graphic on the screen for yeah, folks for to, sure. to go there as a resource too. And I'm happy to send that out. That's something that I know that you've included in your newsletters in the past and we got a great response from that of parents. Good. Going, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, I had no idea. Yeah. I think the term jewel had just, <laughs> it had come out not long before that and then Kind of the disguise of almost like a computer uh, yeah, flash, flash drive. drive yeah. Yeah. And let's be honest, the, once it's not this anymore, it's going to be something else. And so Correct. Once one people, of, yeah, people will get on to this. They will get on to yeah, this, and then we're going to see something else. Different. Yeah. Um, Jewel, I will mention on, you know, their company is very outspoken about reducing youth access to it, but they don't have any control over who buys it. Yeah. Um, one of the things that Detective Lucci and I do is we actively go out to Jeweling, I'm sorry, um, to vape stores, and we ask them, what's the latest thing we need to know? And one of the alarming trends on that is the increase of selling uh, heating coils that you can use uh, THC or marijuana oil in. Hmm. And that's absolutely the next big thing. It's a big thing now, but it's, uh, we're seeing the vape stores sell more and more of hmm. those coils that are adaptable for vape juice or THC oils. Oh, very, very informative, very interesting. But let's hope that um, the efforts you're both undertaking and others working with you have uh, a, a pretty immediate and, and substantial impact in curbing what, what really is uh, unfortunate. It's kind of like we've addressed the tobacco product yeah. uh, issue for you know decades and decades. got that, but now it's been replaced by other things. Yeah. This yeah. this being probably the the most uh, the most recent that I've seen and, and the most comprehensive. I mean, it's it just seems it's so far reaching. And every time I look online, there's some new product, and mm. I can't stress enough about how um, all you know. You can talk about who's investing in this mm -hmm. yep. because um, vape companies or cigarette, traditional cigarette companies recognize this is the next thing. Mm. Yeah. So. Uh, a lot of the, like Juul, except this one, the Juul is made by two guys who were cigarette smokers, it says on their website at least. And, um, but uh, a lot of these products are coming from big tobacco. So they're putting a lot of research into uh, the next big mm -hmm. thing. Sure. Um, Philip Morris, who's a big um, mm -hmm. cigarette company, they're even saying that they want to be tobacco free in the next 2020, 2020 or something, like something like that, next couple of years. So they're putting a lot of stuff be, uh, behind their research into this. Hmm. Um, the, the biggest things with me is I just don't want uh, kids to be using this so much and then later on find out that they're now having health defects because right. of this. You know what I mean? We don't know. Sure like, do. We don't know the longevity studies, mm -hmm. and I just don't want them to be the guinea pigs for mm -hmm. some. Mm -hmm. For for yeah, some. We don't want the lack happen. of study mm -hmm. or exactly. lack of information right. to be something that we regret down there. Yeah. I think yeah. Just I think, we, you know, having a good, solid, rational, fact-based conversation with young people mm -hmm. about you know just thinking about some of the things that we've talked about and say, doesn't it make sense to you that this can't be good for you? Exactly. And one of the things that we know about how kids receive information is it's different than, than adults. So we could say to you, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. But the youth brain doesn't always receive that the same sure. way an adult would. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do know, um, and you, you asked about talking to the kids about this, is tell them who's behind this. Mm -hmm. This is big tobacco, yeah. literally taking the big tobacco handbook and applying it to a new device. Right, they're being right. manipulated. Mm -hmm. And we know that they're making a ton of money off of this mm -hmm. and they're purposely targeting young people. Yeah. 
Well, thank you for the work you're both doing with thank this. You. And I know you have others working with you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You've largely been the face of, of this um, challenge, and I, I, I think on behalf of the community, I can say thank you to you for it. And I know, is there a plan to do an additional forum for parents to come and, and learn like they like you had at the library on March 1st, I think, would you have three sessions? We had four. four. Uh, so we're actually, they were full. They were sold we're out full. early, right? Parent University, again, I can't so encourage everybody So Parent University enough. is going to be hosted at the North Reading Middle mm -hmm. High School on Saturday, April 7th. I'll give a little PSA yeah. here for uh, the morning of, of that Saturday. It's uh, 8 o'clock until 1230, and Amy and Paul and some other folks from the police department will yes. be there, too, and I think one of our school nurses, am I right? Yes, Becky that's Brown right. is going to be working to, um, to share information, things like this, um, for parents, in addition to some other products, for them to kind mm -hmm. of be on the lookout for um, in, in raising their children. So um, that's another opportunity for, for people to hear. We have three sessions at Parent University. Three sessions throughout the morning, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, so then we have Prevention Week coming up in May. We'll yeah. be sending out information about that. And we decided to host another parent forum that week because we were so popular. But we're going to host it in the morning for parents who couldn't make uh, an evening session. We're going to switch it to the morning. Um, and that would be at the public library again? It will be at nice. the public library again. Good. I believe we scheduled uh, starting or as early as 7 in the morning. So mm -hmm. if anybody yeah, wants to catch it on the way hours. before work. Yeah, that's great. Anything we can do. But if, you know, I can't encourage anybody enough to just contact us. And, yeah. you know, if you have a parent group, a parent association group, scouting group we're yeah. happy to come and do a presentation there as well great. because this That's is a, a, an alarming trend and the more marijuana becomes a play in this uh whole trend as well we're gonna we're gonna That's have great. some problems well thank you so maybe we can touch i think we probably have a few more minutes if sure. we could just touch on a couple of other maybe points of interest yeah. sure. aside from the vaping yeah. work so um amy you've been kind of transitioning out of your role as the youth services yes. director for some to kind of doing two jobs i know for quite some time now yes What's, uh, what do you see as the challenge ahead in your new role as the um, overseer, the coordinator of the Drug Free Communities Grant for uh, North Reading? First is data collection. Uh, we can guess about some things, but I don't want to do any guessing. Mm. I'd like to know where to direct our efforts and money. This is taxpayer money. This is a federal grant. We need to know where to direct it. Um, and how much did North Reading get? We received 125000 a year mm. for five, five years, years, provided right. the federal government doesn't cut that budget, okay. which has been threatened a couple times. But so a pretty um, sizable amount, pretty of money. sizable amount of money, mm -hmm. and we do whatever we can to make that money accessible to the community. And by that, I mean providing resources, mm -hmm. take homes, mm -hmm. pamphlets, educational series, things like that. Um, and we're presently surveying students in grades six through twelve. Extremely right? important to us. Now. I can't Some stress enough. Online that survey, so parents, if you're yep. If you ask your child if they've completed the survey, when's the deadline for completing that? I think we're going to extend it, so we'll see. Okay, yeah. so there might be a little bit more time to get that Please. done. Are you pleased with the response rate right now? or? Uh, by grades, it's different, so okay. I know that, yeah, I'll let you know. But we're looking for, um, for more participation. So, absolutely. Okay. So we want a valid survey. Yep. You know. And the more participation absolutely. we have, the validity is higher. Yep. So, okay, good. Uh, the other challenge is obviously, you know, everybody is... The, the increased awareness about opioid addiction has mm. been tremendous. I feel like everybody has really got a pretty good grasp of the scope of the problem, but not everybody has a grasp of the causation of the problem. And so uh, one of our challenges is really going to be about that prevention piece, understanding, you know, uh, if your student's going in for wisdom teeth extraction, as a parent, you have the right to say, I'm not going to fill that script. I don't want my kid to suffer, but you mm -hmm. don't have to do that. Um, and if you do choose to do that, that doesn't make you a bad parent. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, make sure that you're monitoring things. If you have an older adult that you live with, you take care of. Just making sure all those unintended addictions, we reduce that as much as possible. Right. And then addre ad um, addressing the progression of any addiction, whether it be the transition from vaping to opioids. You know, it's not a clear line. And, but just being aware that if, you're, if your inhibitions are down because you've started here, mm -hmm. We need to be aware of that. Mm. So a lot of parent education and a lot of um, adult education. Paul. Yes. New to your role as a school resource officer yeah. this year, doing a nice job. Thank I see you. you just about every morning. <laughs> yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you are there every day. I may just not see you every morning. <laughs> True. But uh, a graduate of North Reading High School. Yeah, 2004. Proud, proud Hornet. Absolutely. Um, are you enjoying your new role? I absolutely and love it. And what is yeah. it you like the most about it? Uh, I think... I, I, well, first, the kids are great. The kids are great. Uh, yeah, the kids are great. Yeah. They really are. Everyone's really friendly. Uh, you walk down the hallway. They like to say hi. They like to engage mm -hmm. in conversation. Um, I, I just love the fact that um, I can go back to the school that 
I felt safe at the school when I was there. I had a great education. I had a great. Um, you had a great principal. Too. Great principal too. <laughs> Absolutely, I had a great principal. It, it was it was a great environment to grow up. It really was, and I just want to keep it that way. Sure. And uh, so it's an honor for me to come back and, and, and do that for the kids. But yeah, it's a, it's a great community. So I, I love it so. Well, you're far. doing a very nice job. You're Thank very you. very visible, very accessible. Absolutely. I know sometimes you're getting phone calls from <laughs> from par uh, principals yeah. and parents, you know, yep. who have an issue and they want to talk to you. And I think the fact that you're your visibility is high, I think has made you know, a difference in, in the you. fact that you're uh, reachable and accessible. We've had a good, good stretch of years with, with uh, police from um, North Reading in our schools as school resource officers. Yeah. And we've often felt at times you know, when someone was moving on either through promotion or a change in their role and they were leaving the school resource officer, there was a sense of disappointment uh, on the part of the administration mm -hmm. because you yeah. develop a relationship, a good working of relationship course, yeah. with people. And so you don't know what you're going to get when the next person comes in. But with you, you know, some of us knew you yeah. and um, and the transition has been very smooth. And I, I hope I so. I want to thank, thank you. you for the work you're doing. You're Amy, welcome. thank you to you. you. Do you have any parting thoughts you want to offer to the community oh. before we uh, you come know, to a close? Anybody is concerned, you can always, you know, again, contact your, your school's guidance off, uh, office. Contact me. Um, yeah. We'll give you as many tools as we can. I always mention that if anybody knows anybody who is suffering from active addiction, mm. you can call the police department. You know, we're not looking to arrest our way out of this. Yep. We will get you connected in whatever way we can to a resource to help That's to help advice. end that. Yeah. Good, good. Well, thank you both for the work you're doing. Thanks. Thank you for being my guest today, and thank you for watching.